ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ഭരണത്തിന് കീഴിലേ ദൈവാരാധന at the appointed time all such questions will be answered if you have patience before you make any covenant or friendship with anyone take holy spirit with you jalathalum aathmavinalum janikkunnillengil oruvanum devarajyathil praveshikkuka sadhyamalla the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you o lord chapter 6 verses from 51 Jesus said to the Jews I am the living bread which has come down from heaven anyone who eats this bread will live forever and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world then the Jews started arguing with one another how can this man give us his flesh to eat they said Jesus replied I tell you more solemnly if you do not eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you will not have life in you anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I shall raise him up on the last day for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me and I live in him as I who am sent by the living father myself draws life from the father so whoever eats me will draw life from me this is the bread come down from heaven not like the bread our ancestors ate they are dead but anyone who eats this bread will live forever the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ please kindly pray for me for a moment in silence thank you for your prayers god is good all the time all the time god is good today we have this solemn feast this is called corpus christi that is the body of christ why this feast is been started it was started by pope urban the 4th it was in 1264 the reason for this one of the main reason there was as as holy nun called saint juliana of mont cornillon she is from belgium one day during prayer she had a vision of a full moon and inside the full moon she could see one black spot and while praying she got the revelation that it is a missing feast until then there was no feast in honor of the body and the blood of christ she told this to the priest then the pope was informed then the pope got convinced that there should be a feast in honor of the body and the blood of christ and pope entrusted saint thomas aquinas to prepare the mass and the office for the feast of corpus christi since then it's in the liturgy another important thing why this feast was introduced is about is because of a priest is a german priest called father peter for prague now he had this doubt whether the real presence is there in the body and the blood of jesus he had this doubt so he was on a pilgrimage to italy and on his pilgrimage where he reached in bolzano in italy he was celebrating the mass with that suspicion and that day while celebrating as he was breaking the bread the blood came out of it he was so much shocked and he could really cry and feel the presence of the lord it was been informed to the bishop then to the pope and still there is this that real presence is been visible made visible in the cathedral in Orvieto in Italy now as we have this solemn feast we the, the church wanted to speak and tell you that the body and the blood of Jesus has the eucharist has the real presence it is the most real presence on earth this is the presence of god that's what we have just read this is john chapter 6 from 51 we have read that jesus himself said 
from his mouth i am the living bread who said this jesus i am the living bread that came down from heaven that is why in the holy catholic church we have the bread and through the eucharistic prayer that bread truly becomes the body of jesus the blood of jesus comes into it that is the real presence so jesus himself said i am the living bread that came down from heaven whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that will give for the life of the world is my flesh if possible you can repeat the word of god together with me i am the living bread i am the living bread that came down from heaven that came down from heaven whoever eats of this bread whoever eats of this bread will live forever will live forever and the bread that will that i will give for the life and the bread that i will give for the life of the world of the world is my flesh is my flesh remember jesus said this opening his mouth so it's important to believe in the real presence of the eucharist real presence of god we have already seen extensively about the power of the eucharist especially father joseph has taken so many sessions about the power and the mystery of the holy eucharist i just want to continue where we have stopped to tell you that the lord has given us different and various commandments to follow and in as we follow these commandments we can really experience god's love and it is through that we'll be able to experience who jesus in our life just i want to tell you one testimony about the power of the eucharist this is while i was this is about the perpetual adoration and what is the power of it i was in rome for some time then i was in a chapel where we have the blessed sacrament but there was no candle so i want to buy a new candle because they were always use it, use the electric light i want to put a new and a fresh live candle but i was just new in italy i did not know to speak italian and i did not know how to get buy and where to buy this candle but i was afraid to ask the priest in charge there because he's always busy he has no time so i thought of first sitting before the blessed sacrament asking the lord lord can you please inspire me are you happy with this electric light i want to buy a fresh new candle that's an expression of my love what do you say about it and then i got this inspiration from the lord my son i don't want a candle i need you can you sit in front of me like a candle i want to love you i want to speak to you i want to transmit my love to you i need you more than a candle my sisters and brothers there are many people who are very uh, giving lot of importance in cleaning the chapel preparing the flowers and making all the arrangements but they don't find time to sit before jesus because he's alive when you look at the blessed sacrament if you can see that a person is there in that sacrament he has eyes he has ears he has a face everything is going to change everything is going to change hebrews 12:25 we read that we do have a god who speaks to us he wanted to speak to us he wanted to communicate see that you do not refuse the one who is speaking for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven again once again we read from the beginning just that first word see that you do not refuse the one who is speaking it's a continuous process and he is really and truly present in the blessed sacrament daily and remember he wants to see you remember that if you have a guest coming to your house you have prepared the full room and you have made your guest be seated there and you go and sleep in your room what kind of disrespect it is 
the lord is really present e we have the perpetual adoration this perpetual adoration can bring all the transformation in our life perpetual adoration can give you life answers it will give you solutions for your problem i do remember that one day a lady came to me her problem her marriage was not taking place and now she is more than 32 years old her marriage is not taking place she is in very difficult trouble i told her can you do one small favor we have perpetual adoration here we don't have enough people can you go and sit before the blessed sacrament and whatever inspiration you get write down in a piece of paper it will help not only you but also even those who are not married so your intention is not just your marriage to take place there are many whose marriages are not taking place can you also pray that because it is god's will somebody should get married this is part of sixth commandment when the lord says you shall not commit adultery in itself it implies you have to get married let's read in 1 corinthians chapter 7 from 1 this is god's teaching let's listen to the word of god then you will understand now concerning the matters about which you wrote, you wrote it's well for a man not to touch a woman it is well for a man not to touch a woman see that we live in a society in a community in a in a culture in a generation where sexual immorality is on the peak and the scripture says it's well for a man not to touch a woman then we read verse 2 but because of cases of sexual immorality each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband it is what god's design so a woman who is uh, who is uh, maybe 25 years 26 years 24 years a man is also of that same age is god's plan you should have you should marry because if a woman is not married at the age of 32 that means she has not started a life of her own according to the plan of god if it is god's will to get married so if some so many people their problem they are undecided they don't know what to do this is what the, the what god is telling you are still struggling because you are not married and you are still confused the lord wants you to get married so this particular woman who is 32 years we recommended her to go and sit before the blessed sacrament because jesus is alive pray pray for all those who are not married and give me whatever inspirations you get basically you have to open your bible and read she is a very she is an intercessor she is a prayerful woman so i asked her to pray later on she came to me gave me she has given me six scriptures this is what i want to share with you today because it's also part of our uh, series on the commandments now the scriptures the lord revealed to an unmarried woman who was 32 years is not only helped her later within 3 4 months her marriage took place and she became a very good example and she also helped me to help others because god gave her these revelations the first one was from isaiah 62 verse 4 let's all read together especially those who are not yet married and you are undecided we have to read this this is a lady who got this from the bible you shall no more be tamed forsaken and your land shall no more be tamed desolate but you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married for the lord delights in you and your land shall be married so it's god's happiness that you have to be married so she understood that day because she was undecided the, the lord is telling her i am delighted when you get married so this is my plan for you to get married this is the first inspiration she got then when she opened let's all read together especially those who are not married little kids you don't want to read those who want to get married you can just repeat after me you shall no more be tamed forsaken you shall no more be tamed forsaken and your land shall no more be tamed desolate and your land shall no more be tamed desolate and you shall be called my delight 
and you shall be called my delight is in her is in her and your land married and your land married for the lord delights in you for the lord delights in and your land shall be married and your land shall be married we have already told you how to claim the word of god so if you have a desire to get married and you don't know what to do you have to say i shall no more be tamed forsaken and my land shall no more be tamed desolate and i shall be called god's delight is in me we continue and my land married for the lord delights in me and i shall be married this is what the lord revealed to her so that confusion whether to be married is gone then the lord revealed to her this is from isaiah this is 34 verse 16 isaiah 34 16 I say 3416 seek and read from the book of the lord not one of these shall be missing none shall be without its mate for the mouth of the lord has commanded and his spirit has gathered them what does it mean seek and read from the book of the lord not one of these shall be missing none shall be without its mate that means none shall be without a life partner mate means a partner a, a, the one who is supposed to be your mate for the mouth of the lord has commanded and his spirit has gathered so we told her to repeat it and claim it so that the lord will let her find whom god has prepared for this person again this is genesis chapter 2 verse 18 Genesis chapter 2 was 18 Genesis 2 18 Then the Lord God said It is not good that the man should be alone I will make him a helper as his partner This is what the Lord when he created the human beings he said It is not good that the man should be alone I will make him a helper as his partner In the same way we also read in the book of this is book of Tobit this is chapter 6 Tobit chapter 6 verse 18 the same thing and 86 uh, Tobit chapter 8 verse 6 I will read this out to you you made this is the prayer Tobias prayed the book of Tobit is a beautiful prayer for families beautiful book Tobit 86 You made Adam and for him you made his wife Eve as a helper and support from the two of them the human race has sprung you said is not good that the man should be alone let us make a helper for him like himself this is god's word what this lady was this girl was getting the revelation it is god's plan that she should get a partner if it is god's original plan why i am not getting and we should know when we ask when we plead lord you yourself said it's not good for me to be alone and i am already 32 years you said you have prepared a partner show me this so she was claiming god's promise tobit 86 you made adam and for him you made his wife eve as a helper and support from the two of them the human race has sprung you said it is not good that the man should be alone let us make a helper for him like himself so when they start when she started to claim it the lord has opened that door again another scripture the lord gave to her is isaiah 43 6 then now her prayer is i don't know where is my partner you yourself have to bring this i will say to the north give them up and to the south do not withhold bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth you don't know basically where your partner is at present the lord knows whether he is in north or whether he is in south whether he is in america or he is in canada whether he is in india or he is in goa or he is in mumbai or he is in nairobi you don't know where he is god knows and when you are claiming lord bring your daughter bring your son whom you have prepared this is 
what the Lord is going to do. Again now this is from Isaiah chapter 60 verse 20. Isaiah 60 20. 